In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete the tutorial assignments, homework 2.4, 2.5, and 2.6. Once you have completed your history in Galaxy, you've filtered your FASTQ files so that they're approximately the same size, and you've run Kraken 2 with both the standard database and an alternate database, you're going to be producing these large files that list all of the classifications for every read in your FASTQ file for the microbiome project. In order to process those tabular files, we have to learn how to filter data in R and also how to plot data in R. And that's what these three homework assignments, 2.4, 2.5, and 2.6 are going to show you how to do. So let's start with 2.4. This is an introduction to Boolean expressions. Um, Boolean expressions are values that are either true or false. So instead of storing data that's an integer or a numeric data set or a character data set, we can also store variables that are going to just be true or false. So we'll start with something really simple. If we create a variable called my numeric, that's three, my character, a, my integer, the same number three, but stored as an integer or my logical, we can tell what kind of data they are by looking in our environment. So you can see my character is stored with quotes around it. The quotes indicate that it's a, a character variable. Integers have a letter L after them to indicate that they're not the number 3.00, but they're actually the integer value three. Logicals will be true or false. And then numeric shows up here as um, just a value three without that L after it. So you can quickly in the environment view what type of data you have. And then you can check that R is guessing that your variable is correct. When you are reading in data and R guesses wrong, so let's say you have a column of data that R thinks is numeric, but you want it to be integer, these commands are really helpful. So as.integer, as.character, as.logical will let you change R's initial guess as to what data type you have and fix it um, when you use read.csv or read.table um, so that you can read it incorrectly. And it will be graphable and filterable. We can also create not just single values, but we can create vectors of these different types. So we can make a numeric vector with the C command or a character vector with the C command. One thing that's nice is once it's a vector, it will actually label the type. So you can see CHR here indicates character, NUM indicates number. We can combine two vectors that are different types using lists. So lists are really helpful in bioinformatics because a lot of times we have matched data where one column is different than the other column and lists can be different types and they can also be different sizes. So you can see this list comprises of a numeric vector, which is three long and a character vector, which is four long. So in a data frame, we have to have the same number of rows and columns. In a list, we're allowed to break that rule and we can have lists that have different, different values different lengths and different character types and different data types. One thing we can do to test our ability to use these kind of variables is we can use some built-in data that comes with R. Um, I come back to this data frame all the time when I'm trying to learn a new function or test out a new plot format and the load, the built-in data, empty cars. If we type empty cars as a command, we can see in the console what is stored in this data frame. We could also see this by double clicking on the value empty cars in the environment, and we can see a preview. And it's simply a list of cars and their different attributes. So we have miles per gallon, number of cylinders, displacement, and all of these things are parameters that we can use to filter the data. For homework 2.4, I've given you one example. We can subset the cars that are 
miles per gallon greater than 25. And you can see that this is a much shorter list than the whole data frame. The assignment asks you to find other attributes, um, to look at empty cars and find um, only the cars that have four cylinders, to find different, um, all these different things, and test out the different filter tests that you can use with the subset command. So I'm just going to show you a couple other examples. So you see there are two cars that have the exact same amount of horsepower, 110. If we want to do equals, we can't just do a single equal sign because in the R programming language, that means I'm setting that equal. We can do two equal signs, set it equal to 110. And then when we run that line, you'll get three lines. So three cars have exactly 110 horsepower. If we want to look at not equals, we can use exclamation equals, can run the same thing, and we'll end up with the rest of the data frame except for those three rows. So as you complete the homework, this is your goal. Change this line, the subset line, to have a couple of different versions to filter out only the information that's requested in the homework. Once you've completed that, you're going to download the intro to Boolean filters and open it up on your computer. You'll want to change the comments to change it to your name and today's date. and walk through the script to test out each of these things. So if we have a variable L, we can set it equal to an equation. If the equation is true, the value will be true. Two plus two equals equals four. It's doing that same test that we just did on empty cars. Equals equals 110 is a way of typing, is it equal? It's kind of asking a question instead of setting it equal. When I run this line, I'm able to make a new variable that is true. I can make the variable false by typing in an equation that's not true. My example is 4 times 20 does not equal 80. I could also do 4 times 20 equals 70. Any mathematical equation that is not true will change the value of L to false. Now we're going to use character tests. So instead of numeric tests, where we're comparing two numbers, we're comparing two strings. Is the short string CAT in the long string category? We know it is, so this should be true, and it, it does work out to be true. Your assignment is to change it to make this line false by changing the first term. Um, I I think an easy way to do this is change it from cat to dog. Dog is certainly not in category, and that makes that line false. Now we want to make this line true. So the cow jumped over the moon, um, not the cat jumped over the moon. If we change this to cow, we get a true statement. What we're dealing with in bioinformatics, though, is not sentences, right? Most of the time, the data that we're dealing with is things like genotypes. So short little strings like AA, AG, or GG are going to be the possible genotypes at a single nucleotide polymorphism, the single location in the genome. If we read in that character vector, we can now use GREPL to find out if a genotype is there. So we look, does genotype 1 contain a G and L1 is false, so it does not. Does genotype 2 contain a G? We can see that it does, right? AG has a G in it. And now we want to fill in the expression for row 3. So we're going to copy the grep L, still look for a G, but we're going to look for it in the third genotype. And we see that it is not in the third genotype which is true because the third genotype is AA. Now we can make a Boolean value, a logical vector, that is all of these logic values. 
We can do this with the C command. So just like we put three numbers and a numeric vector, we can put three Boolean values in a logical vector. So I'm going to click Run. We get a logical vector that is false, true, false. And we could do this for every single value in this genotype vector, but it's going to be pretty long. So a better way to do it would be to do for i in 1 to 11, because that's how long genotype is, logical vector is equal to grep l g for not genotype in a typed number, but the ith genotype. Now we can run this for loop. And it automates what we did as three separate steps to do it for the whole length of the vector. We can now filter only the data that has what we're looking for, that has a true value for does the genotype have G? We can do that by genotype square bracket, logical vector, and now that we have those four rows, we can write them to a new CSV file. So we're going to write filtered data. to a new file called filtered genotypes.csv. And as we always do when we export files, we'll set row names equal to false. I can click on the file to see what it looks like. And I see that I have my short list. and All of them do have the letter G in them.